Hello and welcome back to the Drive School. Today we are going to look at more advanced functions on the grid converter. How to implement it on a ship power management system. take a look at how our ship grid looks like. Usually you have an AC grid which is powered by several generator, G diesel generators. And we are now going to implement our energy storage to this ship grid. Between the diesel generator and the battery we need to have some kind of load sharing. This load sharing can be done in two ways. You have the traditional drooping and you have the isosynchronous mode which are controlled with reference from the power management. First, take a look at the drooping function. Typically all diesel engines have inbuilt a drooping function. And what it does, it can droop off its frequency as function of the load. It means you start with some base frequency. On a ship it could be 60 Hz, on shore it could be 50 Hz. Anyway, when the load increase, the frequency will drop off because active load, that is load mechanically on the diesel engine, that is pushing on the ship frequency. Let's say the ship frequency is 50 Hz. If this diesel generator tried to create 50.5 Hz, it means that you are pushing on the frequency and there will be an active current going on on this diesel engine and it will be seen as a mechanical load on the diesel engine. You actually can hear it, you can see it on the exhaust smoke from the diesel that it actually is loaded. Energy storage can do exactly the same thing. When we are running the grid converter in a drooping mode, we are doing exactly the same drooping function. We decide what is the base frequency. Let's say it's 50 Hertz. We decide what the drooping is. Let's say it's two Hertz. Two Hertz means that when you have achieved 100% of the nominal rating of this frequency converter. Okay, then you will have two hertz drop off. There is one disadvantage with this, and that is when you have a drooping going on on your ship, when you see that the frequency is 49 hertz, what actually have happened then? You have mechanically loaded your diesel engines. In some cases you don't want to see abrupt changes of load on the diesel engines especially when they run on these environmentally friendly fuel types like liquid natural gas and other kind of biofuels they can take abrupt changes in load and abrupt changes in load you will leave to the battery because that is just electronics, it can take a very rapid increase in load and also when the consumers reduce the load very fast you can then charge the battery to like emulate the load that was on the grid. And the result of this, what you want to achieve is a very even and nice load on the diesel engines. In that way the diesel engines can utilize all these kind of environmental friendly fuels. What about the voltage on a ship grid? The voltage nominal is 690 volts. It means that these diesel generators have an automatic voltage regulator, a so-called AVR, that try to aim for 690 volts. It means also that 
The energy storage also aim for 690 volts and the amplitude of the sinus should be totally equal. However, the ship consumers, they might have a reactive current going on and also there will be voltage drop on the ship grid. When there is a voltage difference between the grid and this energy producer, the diesel generator and the energy storage, there will be a reactive current flowing from the generator and also from the energy storage. This reactive current need to be controlled in some kind of way. And we use a drooping function also for the voltage. This drooping function for the voltage is very similar to the frequency drooping. If we aim for 690 volts, it means that when the reactive current is going up to 100% of the drive nominal current rating, we reduce the voltage produced from here. When we reduce the voltage, okay, the load will back off a little bit. So in this way, we back off our share of the reactive load on the grid. If we have the same drooping on the voltage on the energy storage as the diesel generator, okay, they will take about the same proportionally part of the reactive load on the grid. Typically, when you have direct online start consumers, there is a big drop in the voltage and the generators and the energy storage need to feed a lot of reactive currents just to keep the voltage up. And then the voltage drooping will determine how low the voltage will drop on the ship. If we make it too stiff, then the current can be quite big just to maintain the voltage on the grid. Uh, where is the most common place to use the drooping mode? Shore power and when you have a blackout of the ship and running on pure battery power, the most common mode is then the drooping mode because there is no grid to support the isosynchronous mode. What is the isosynchronous mode? Isosynchronous mode means that we just adapt to the grid on the ship and we adjust to whatever frequency is there. And if the reference says you are not taking any loud right now, well, you will get the frequency which the other energy producers have created on the grid. If you look at the load diagram, the drooping diagram, it means that you basically adjust your curve. Let's say the grid have dropped to 48.7 hertz because of the load drooping on the ship. In isosynchronous mode, if you have told the drive to don't take any load now, okay, it will adjust down to this point. It will say that my base frequency now is 48.7. I don't take any load. And it's when the power management tell me to start pushing on the grid to take active load. Okay, then I lift my curve and I can lift it quite high. I can go up to maybe here. And then even at 50 Hertz, I could take 50% load. So with the reference, lifted when there is a command from the power management to take load in isosynchronous i basically just adapt to whatever frequency is on the ship grid and adjust up to whatever needed to hit the reference given by the power management modern ship grids today often have a functionality called drooping compensation it means that this drooping functionality is present, but 
to keep some kind of defined frequency for the ship, they lift it always so that you will see 50 hertz and the load on the diesel generators, energy storages, they are adapted to the consumers. So on the grid, you will see like a, almost like a fixed frequency. And this is low drooping compensation. And it can be a little bit confusing to look at the grid then because the frequency then is not really indicating what the load is here. You have to look at the amperes running from each and every diesel generator and energy storage. That's the only way that we can see what the load is going on. When looking at the total ampere running through the energy storage, we have to be aware that the total current is the sum of active current and reactive current. The battery only see active power because DC only work with active power. But on this side, we actually work with a AC system, which consists of both an active part and a reactive part. And this is how it looks in total. The losses over our filters and trafos, and then we have actually the physical job that we do for the grid and transfer to the battery. However, the drive also have to deal with the reactive current and the reactive current. We, of course, we can minimize it as much as possible, but there is always some kind of reactive current going on to hit the voltage level on the ship grid. The drive total current will be affected by this because the current that we can read here, the total current, well, it is only like 900 ampere of these are doing a physical job for us because we already have occupied some of our drive capacity on handling the reactive current. Be aware of this because when dimensioning, sizing of this system, don't forget that you also have to handle the reactive current in the system. When is the reactive current big and when it is small? Well, if you have a ship with automatic voltage regulator for the diesel generators that are high quality, high precision, then the voltage will be quite stable. Then our drive doesn't need to compensate much for reactive currents and the reactive current will be low. However, if it's a ship with not so good precision in the voltage control, the 690 keep going all over the place well then the drive need to follow these voltage changes and there will be a reactive current going on and this reactive current will be bigger so make sure that dimensioning of the grid have also the margin for handling the reactive current the reactive current on ships could be anything between two percent and twelve percent we have seen in practical life when talking about a reactive current and active current, we often use a percentage value. This percentage is a percentage of the drive nominal current rating. So 150 ampere on the reactive current means 50% of my IGBTs are used now for handling the reactive current. 15% and 90% doesn't add up to 100% because, well, it's vector summarization. One other thing is that the active load is the same as the base current reference given from the power management. It means if the power management asks for a specific active load, this is given on the base current reference. This is like the power handle from the power management to the drive. And it reflects only the active current. What the reactive current will be, you never know. Because it's the voltage drooping on the grid. So you just have to leave some margin for it. Now let's take a look at 
peak shaving. Energy storage is used to a great extent for peak shaving. When is the peak shaving needed? That is to reduce the dynamic load on generators, especially liquid natural gas generators. They have very slow dynamic characteristics. The performance is not too good for big changes in load. Uh, pure diesel, marine gas oil, have a quicker dynamic, maybe 100 kilowatt per second for a 2 megawatt uh, generator. But with liquid natural gas, because of the manifold and fuel system, it's really, really slow. So you don't want one of the consumers to put on a big load in a very abrupt way. If you have a direct started thruster, there is a compressor or hydraulic power plant, which can suddenly take 500 kilowatt in a second, then the only way to deal with this today is to have many, many diesel generators running, to have a spinning reserve, to have a lot of margins to cope with these huge changes. Today we have a smarter possibility, and that is using our energy storage, because the energy storage is instantly. The response is just electronics. It can uh, provide a power in like 100 milliseconds. So this is a very fast acting uh, power source and it can also go bi-directional. So when the thruster here is stopped, suddenly there is no need for all these kilowatts, but you don't want that abrupt change for the generators. So then you can charge the battery just to replace the load that was here and you can taper it off in a nice way so that your generators see this very nice and soft changes. To control this you need a PLC, a power management, which give the power to power reference to the drive. The base current reference. We will give the drive a command how many ampere should go to the grid or be taken from the grid and this is the power management system is looking at total consumption on the grid and uh, looking at these abrupt changes and to protect the diesel generator it give command to the energy storage to take these big and rapid changes if we look at um, the diagram um, Diesel generator sets, the red is the load here. Total consumers is the blue line. And if you start a big consumer, the diesel generators need to provide this power in a very fast and abrupt way. They don't like that. You can risk they are lagging and too much load in too much sh too short time. You can risk that the uh, generator protection system will lift off the whole generator. Then you're losing one generator, more load on the other generator, and they also are overloaded and then boom, 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 you have blackout on the ship. So the way to do it, energy storage. Here we start the energy storage. It's take some load immediately, and we can see that the diesel generators are unloaded a little bit. The consumers sit here constantly and suddenly somebody start a bow thruster or some big consumer. Boom! There is one megawatt in one second. The battery will provide this power. And the diesel generator only will see a slow, slow increase in power. You need to replace the battery state of charge so it sits there with uh, some load to replace that. Uh, energy in the battery, but basically the generator sets are happy with this. This is how a diesel generator or liquid natural gas generator want to work in a soft, nice way. And you have the battery and power electronics to working fast and abrupt. The base current reference is almost immediate response in the active power. Thanks for watching.